Hey y'all and welcome back to the channel and if you're new here thanks so much for joining. Today I am bringing you another episode of our Decades Legacy series and as you can see we are here with Gemma. We did get a notification in our last episode that said that she was on the last bit of her life here that she needed to go ahead and prepare. So I do think that we are going to be losing Gemma in this episode today. And so we are just checking in with Gemma to see how she's doing. She is, as you can see, just heading herself off to the washroom here. But we are most likely going to see Gemma go ahead and pass over today and she is no longer then going to be with us any longer. I think that is going to really have a profound effect on the family. They are going to really be saddened by the loss of her. She has been with us for quite some time. As we know, she was Liam's wife and she had lots of children with him and our family for Jen to really did take on a lovely spin with her as the heir's wife and she really gave it a great touch and I think that she just brought a really nice touch to the family bringing in some musical notes that we really needed into the family and I just think Gemma is such a great addition to our family and to this legacy and it is really going to be sad to see her go. As you know, her and Charles have a great relationship. They are very, very close. I think the loss of Gemma is really going to affect him profoundly. And they are going to, he's really going to struggle with the loss of his grandma. Obviously, we are going to see Norma go through a lot of trouble with losing her mom. She's going to be raising two kids on her own. And that is going to be very difficult for her. So that is going to be something that we're going to see in this episode moving forward is her life changing in a huge dynamic. But unfortunately, it is getting that time where we are going to just have to see her move on because she is getting on up in years and well, our Sims just don't live forever. So as you can see, we are just going to go ahead. We're going to send out Norma for her morning jog. It is that time or well, actually it's the afternoon, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna send her out, let her go get a jog in. And we are going to go ahead and just follow around Gemma here and see what she's up to and kind of keep a close eye on her for a while. And oh my gosh, these children are so cute. They just are so cute. Charles is just getting a little bit of extra credit work done here. He is very studious as we know. He likes to get his homework done. He likes to get his extra credit done. So he is just working on his studies here this afternoon, which is fantastic. And Rebecca is just working with some of her toys, trying to get some of her skills up. And we love that for her because, well, we want her to be well-rounded as well. And it is going to help us as far as with Norma, because if her children have their skills and their traits up, it is going to make her life that much more simple. Um, being able to deal with her children. So we love that they are going to be a little bit well-rounded. And look who it is. We have just come across Neil here, who, as we know, did call us in the last episode and told us that he had a little bit of a crush on us and kind of asked us out on a date. We had told him that, yeah, sure, we would love to go out on a date with you sometime. So we may, on our way back through, try to stop and see if we can have a little bit of a chat with Neil and... Um, see how they kind of get on. Charles is just doing a little bit of watering the plants here in the front garden, which we love. I love that he is so keen on helping out with the chores around the house. That is going to be a huge help to Norma as well once Gemma is gone to know that Charles likes to help with the chickens. He likes to help with the gardening. So he is a huge help around the house, which is going to be so needed for Norma. It really is. Um, and now he's going out to help with the weeding. Okay, we absolutely love this. Like, he's autonomously doing the gardening, and I am here for it. I really am. It is 1965 in our game, and so that is w something that is good to know that we are well on our way within this decade, heading towards the 70s, and this family is just doing really, really well. Obviously, 
once we hit the 70s, we will go through a decade change and our house is gonna maybe change a little bit. Our family's gonna change a little bit, but we are going to see what's going on. She is frustrated from trying to do her skills. She clearly has a little bit of a development delay and is struggling a little bit. Let's go ahead and get Gemma to come in here and give her a little bit of potty training. That way we can get her away from maybe doing some of the stacking that she's struggling with and she can just work on one of her other skills. Potty training is obviously something that takes a little bit of time to build up for kids and so we will definitely want to get some potty training in for her. So she's going to go ask her grandma if grandma will help her with some potty training and I think Gemma would be like, absolutely I will help you little Rebecca and they'll go in there and they'll get some pottying done. She's just watching some television anyway, killing some time, not really doing anything of importance. So why not go ahead and help her granddaughter out? They obviously have just started building a relationship, her and Rebecca. They haven't had as much time to spend building a relationship as her and Charles. Obviously, her and Charles have had much more time to spend together than her and Rebecca just because Charles has been alive longer. So she is just here helping with the potty training. They are working on getting that skill up for Rebecca, which is fantastic. And she's like, come on, Rebecca, you can do this. Obviously, Rebecca is working really hard at trying to get this skill up and they are just working together as a team. And Norma is outside and she has returned back from her run which we absolutely love. She is over here talking with Neil and they are just trying to get a little bit of some romantic interactions in. She's trying to get kind of a feel of how he feels about her. They're going to exchange some numbers. She's going to give him a little bit of a shy kiss and she's going to find out if he's single. She's leapt into his arms here and she's just doing some interactions just to kind of get a feel for how he feels. Obviously he had told her that he has a little bit of a crush for her and they do have a little bit of a romance bar. So she is just trying to wade through those waters and feel out this situation and figure out what's going on here. He is exchanging numbers with her and it seems that maybe he might not be as keen as he had given her the impression that he was. He just yawned over exchanging numbers with her, so I don't know what is really going on with that. But he did accept her advances of a shy kiss, so I I don't know. I'm getting mixed signals from him, but it does look like he's married. Okay, if you're married, why are you telling us you have a crush on us and you want to go on a date? Like, this is not okay. We are not trying to break up a happy home. This is not how things um, are trying to play out. This is not really the life that Norma is trying to lead here. I am so confused. So Norma's run on home. She's like, you're married. Wait a minute. No, 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 Neil. I'm not trying to do that. And so she's come on home. She's feeling really playful right now, but she's really kind of confused by this whole situation. She's like, you know, I really do have feelings for Neil, but I don't, I don't really want to break up a home. Um, so she's come in here. She's put Rebecca down for bed. Rebecca was feeling a little bit tired, so we are just tucking her in for the night. It is about 8.20 p.m., and so we are just putting her into bed for the evening. And we're going to go ahead and let Norma just deal with some of Norma's, you know, thoughts here as she does a little bit of laundry. But she is really confused by the whole situation with Neil. She's not really sure what she's supposed to do about this whole scenario. You know, she does have a crush on him. She does have a little bit of romantic feelings for him. And she was really excited about the prospects of a date with him when he told her that he had a bit of a crush on her. And now she is really, really confused by the fact that he is married and he is coming on to her and giving her these advances. And she's not really sure what she should do. Obviously, she doesn't want to break up a happy home. And if he's married, you know, she doesn't really know how she feels about that. So she is really distraught over the fact that she's not sure how she should go moving forward. And she's thinking maybe she should just leave that alone and find somebody else if she's going to be in a relationship and not pursue the thing with Neil. Um, maybe we'll just leave that be and, you know, not go there. They can just continue to be friends. Um, Gemma's gone ahead and gone to the washroom here. She's taking care of some of her needs. 
it is getting pretty late. I'm going to go ahead and have everyone go ahead and go to bed for the evening. And then I'll catch back with you guys in the morning. And we will hopefully figure out what's going to go on further from this whole scenario with Neil as time progresses throughout the stories. But for now, we're just going to focus on Gemma. Oh, it does look like Charles has gotten up. He has decided that he's needing a little bit to eat here. So, you know, everyone's decided they've gone to bed. Charles is up now. It is about 940 in, at night, but he's like, I'm famished. I've got to get something to eat. So we'll have him go ahead, grab himself a bite to eat here really quick. He can get a little bit of this. Um, it looks like chili here that his mom has made or grandma one or the other. I'm not sure which one of them made it, but someone made a nice meal. He's going to go ahead and partake in. And then we'll let him go ahead and go to the washroom and then he can get himself back into bed for the evening. And then we will catch up with everyone in, you know, after that in the morning. So he did finish that meal up there. We'll just go ahead and clean up after him and cue for him to go ahead and go on to bed. So I'll just go ahead and throw the rest of this meal out here so that it doesn't just sit on the table getting spoiled. And we'll go ahead and let him wash up and get himself off to bed. And we will catch back with you guys in the morning. And we'll see how the whole family's doing in the morning. It is the next morning. And as you can see, Gemma is up. She is needing to get something to eat. It's only about three o'clock in the morning, but she has decided that she is desperate for some food. So she's grab grabbing herself a little bit of a, looks like BLT here. She's going to go ahead and grab something to eat. Gemma and Norma are both the only ones up. The children are still in bed, getting themselves a little bit of shut eye. Norma is in a really, really bad mood. She's feeling kind of enraged this morning. She's also going to go ahead and grab herself something to eat. I'm not exactly sure what she's enraged about, but I think it might have something to do with the fact that Neil told her he had a crush on her and then obviously ended up being married. I think she has had plenty of time to think about that now, and she is not at all happy about the way that turned out. And she is thinking, how dare he think that I would be the kind of woman that would just come on in and be okay with breaking up a happy home? Like, what exactly does he take me for? I cannot believe that he would think that I would be okay with that. He should know me better than that. We have been friends for so long. But maybe Neil is just thinking like, look, I'm in this marriage. Maybe it's not a happy marriage. Maybe it's a marriage that's on the rocks. And maybe he just really has a good relationship with Norma. And he was hoping that him and Norma could, you know, possibly be together. I don't really know what Neil was thinking, but Norma is pissed. She is not having it. She is not having it at all. She is really struggling with what she's currently feeling. And I am actually surprised that she's not, you know, in there trying to calm herself down in the mirror. But that being said, she is in here talking to her mom. She's like, how are you doing? I know that obviously you had spent some time with the kids yesterday while I was out on my jog. And how did that go with Rebecca? And she's like, actually, everything went great with Rebecca. We did a little bit of potty training and that went really well. Rebecca gets a little upset when she deals with the stacking of the blocks. But aside from that, everything was really good. And I absolutely love spending time with the kids, as you know. And she's like, I, I don't mind watching them whenever you need to go out and do some errands. And she's like, well, that is great to know. I really appreciate it when you watch them for me. I realize that, you know, sometimes they can be a little bit of a handful. So I truly appreciate every time you do that. That being said, do you care if I go ahead and go out for a bit of a run now? And she's like, no, not at all. They're asleep. Just go ahead and go have yourself a run while, while they're resting. And she's like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and go for a jog. And Jim is like, that's fine. I'm going to go in the kitchen and get some cooking done. So Norma's going to go out and she's going to have herself a morning run. Obviously, she has had some anger this morning and it would do her some good to go ahead and get her morning jog in. It'll give her time to think. It'll give her time to kind of get some endorphins running through her body. And while she does that, Gemma here is just going to go ahead and get some breakfast scramble going. And obviously, we'll have some breakfast then for the children once they get up out of bed to eat. So they can grab themselves a serving of that. So that'll be perfect for everyone. 
and that's done, which is beautiful. We'll go ahead and cue for the kids to go ahead and get up and have themselves a serving of this meal. And then Norma can just continue on with her jog. Okay, it looks like she's finished with her jog actually, which is great. She did that in record time. So we'll go ahead and have her come over and take care of the chicken coop here. It does look like we need to scatter some food and clean the coop and we will make sure that everything is taken care of here at the house. It does look like we also need to get some of these plants sold here. So we will go ahead and sell all of these plants. So Gemma's just going to come on out and do a little bit of gardening here. which made her level up to level eight of the gardening skill. So she's still trying to get up her skills. <laughs> Even now as an elder, she's still gaining in skills, which we love. Just goes to show you that old dogs can learn new tricks. And as you can see, these two are just having a nice chat about the plants and about their day and she's going to go ahead and go on inside here and get a little bit of music done. As we know, Gemma absolutely loves playing music, whether it's the piano or the banjo, she doesn't really care as long as there's some kind of musical instrument that she can play. That's all she really cares about. She absolutely loves music. It is one of the biggest loves of her life. Aside from obviously her children and her husband that is no longer with us, music is a huge love of hers. Okay, let's go ahead and get Rebecca up so she can grab something to eat because honestly, she has got to be starving. So we'll get her out of bed and let her go grab herself a plate of food. And let's go ahead and get Norma to do some of this laundry here. All right, Rebecca is just gonna go grab herself a plate of that breakfast scramble finally, which is just in the nick of time because she is seriously close to starving to death, which is not ideal. As we know, we don't want her to get taken away. Uh, we really don't. And I'm just going to check in on Gemma here because she is playing the banjo and singing a little bit, which we love. Look at her go. She is seriously getting down and doing such a fantastic job. And she's also earned some money on her day off, which we love for that as well. Um, from being retired. So that's perfect. Oh no, the circle of life. Oh, she's actually passing away right this second. She literally played a song and then laid down and is passing away. Oh my gosh. Gemma, no. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. You're gloomy now. She, Norma has felt an overwhelming sadness wash over her and now she's going to be gloomy. Okay, well that is a comment just to the nick of time. Your mother just passed away and now you're going to have the gloomy trait. I mean, you know, that <clears throat> makes sense. Gemma has lived a long life, but her time has finally come. She is dying of old age. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe it, but you know what? She has been with us for such a long time and it makes perfect sense that she would finally go to be with Liam she has been without him for so long since he died in the war and she really has missed him so much and she's now finally going to get to be with him again. And so that is good that she is at least going to get to be with her Liam again, even though our family is seriously going to miss Gemma. Um, you know, at least she is going to go and be with him in peace, which you know, I, I love that for her. I really do. Goodbye, Gemma. May you rest in peace. We're going to go ahead and we're going to engrave the epitaph. And we're going to say, Gemma O'Hara Loving Mother No, Loving Wife, Mother, and Grandmother you will be missed. And then the year that she was deceased is 1965. Okay. And I'm going to put her in 
Norma's inventory here and then we're gonna actually put her out on the tree like under the tree next to Cora and I'm gonna go ahead and have Norma come out and mourn her, mourn her mother and I'm going to have Rebecca come out and mourn her grandma. Um, obviously, Charles is headed off to school, so he can't mourn her right now, but he can mourn her when he comes back from school. But we're going to go ahead and get the two that are here to go ahead and mourn at the tombstone. And just, I think it will make them feel a little bit better if they can mourn their mom and grandmother. And I, th I think it will just help a little bit. Oh, they're so, she's so sad. I hate that for her. The poor dear. <laughs> Look at little Rebecca stumbling on out here and she's just like, oh mommy, what's wrong? And then she sees the tombstone and she starts crying and she's like, oh no, grandma. And so then she starts mourning her grandma too. But I am going to actually, after they are done mourning here, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a montage of Gemma's life so that you guys can see her life and some memories from her life. And then we will continue on with the episode. So let's go ahead and start that now. Oh, she's so sad. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of Gemma's memories. I'm getting chills when they tell me you're not yourself. Trying to move, but it's hard. I'm out of They call us whatever they'll do. They're running in circles, circle our fools. Whatever we will miss, got nothing to prove. But in the dark, it's starting to. Whatever they call us, whatever they'll do. We're running together, I'll be here for you. Whatever we will miss, we we'll find something new. They call us whatever they do. They're running in circles, circle of fools. Whatever we will miss, got nothing to prove. But in the dark, I'm starting to. Whatever they call us, whatever they do, we want it together. I'll be here for you. Now that we have taken a look at Gemma's memories you can see we are now back with Norma she has gone on a bit of a jog she is seriously upset she's mourning her mother's demise <laughs> and she is going out she's already gone on one jog for the day but she is really really upset and she's decided to go out for another jog she does like to jog when she's upset it gives her time to think and right now she is really thinking to herself what am I gonna do like I am now absolutely on my own. I have two kids that I have to raise by myself and I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that. Evangeline is calling. She's saying, I heard what happened. I'm so sorry you're going through such a tough time. If you'd like some company, we wouldn't mind staying over for a few days to keep you company. 
sure, feel free to come over if you'd like. That's fine. <clears throat> so we're going to let Evangeline and Maddie come over. They can visit if they want. That's perfectly fine. We don't care if they want to come over. They can totally do that because as you can see, Norma is really upset. She is realizing like I am on my own. I'm single raising these children. I am a little out of my element. I don't really know if I can handle this. I don't know what I'm doing. I've had mom this whole time to kind of help me out and now she's gone. Like what, what am I doing? Do I even know what I'm doing? And she is kind of freaking out just a little bit. So she's, she's just distraught really. And so she's, she's just not sure exactly what she's supposed to do next. Rebecca here is obviously really upset by the fact that she's lost her grandma and she is crying and carrying on and so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get Norma to come on over and just give her a little bit of a comfort and a hug and just try to cheer her up a little bit. Obviously it's going to be a little difficult. They are both really saddened by the loss of a family member and they're trying to comfort one another. I'm sure that they can comfort one another, but at the end of the day, they're both saddened by the same loss. So I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we can try. And we are going to go ahead and we're going to just take care of Rebecca to the best of our ability here. But also they're going to do a little bit of playtime. She's trying to cheer up Rebecca to the best of her ability. As you can see, Maddie has come over. He is watching this interaction and he has realized oh that is the little girl that she had with that random person and as you know her and maddie do not have the best relationship because they didn't end on the best of terms obviously they were married they're now divorced he's now married to her sister and so they don't have the best relationship in the world but they do share a child together in charles and so, obviously, they would need to be cordial to one another. He has come over because, obviously, Evangeline and Norma have just lost their mother. And he, I'm sure, in some way, does still care for Norma in some capacity. Whether it be a friend or just a, the fact that she is the mother of his child. So, he has come over just to check on things. And I would think that possibly he may be concerned about Charles poss possibly like I hope that he is concerned a little bit about Charles that that is my hope so he has come over to just check on them and make sure that they're okay after the the word came through that obviously Gemma has passed away so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get Norma here doing some things around the house we're going to have her pick up the trash and do a little bit of laundry and just do some things to kind of keep her mind busy. And we're going to have Maddie go ahead and just kind of try to have a little bit of conversation with her at some point. Maybe he can try to comfort her a little bit or console her some in some way. But obviously he will definitely try to reach out to Charles when Charles gets home and comfort Charles. I think that he is maybe going to be able to be more there for Charles than he would be for Norma. Just because him and Norma do have a bit of a awkward relationship. I think to an extent Charles is going to feel a little bit awkward around Norma because he's married to Evangeline. I think he would think like, oh, well, I'm sure that Norma probably has a problem with me because I fell in love with her sister and married her sister. Not realizing that Norma could really care less. She doesn't hold any, any grudges against that and she doesn't really have any any qualms about him uh, where it comes to that whole relationship. She's over it. She doesn't really care one way or the other. She, she, really, could, she really doesn't care. She's just like, whatever, you make Evangeline happy, yay for you. You don't make me happy, so I don't want to be with you. So you should be with who you want to be with. And if you want to be with my sister, then be with my sister. And he's helping us clean up. Okay, we absolutely love that. Thank you so much because honestly there's one of us and she's making a mess and yeah we could totally use the help so he's already helping us out which yes thank you thank you so much we we desperately need the help so i am 
thankful that he is here and he's helping. Obviously, we only have one child home right now. She is a toddler, but she's clearly, you know, in a way, obviously, because of the mood that she's in from losing her grandma, and she is wreaking havoc on the house. We're going to get her on the potty here, and we're going to do a little bit of potty training. That way, she can be potty trained, and we'll help her with her bladder issues that she's got going on here because she needs some bladder work. But yeah, I think that unfortunately Rebecca is just kind of acting out a little bit because she misses her grandma. And so she's putting stuff on the floor, paint and chocolate and all these things. And she's not even thinking about the fact that mom has to clean that up later. No, she doesn't care. She's just like, whatever, I'm upset. I'm going to do what I want to do. And not understanding that, well, mom is upset as well. So thank goodness that Maddie's there and he's willing to be here to help us out. And he was able to like clean that up for her because honestly, I, I feel really bad for Norma because not only is she needing to adjust to the fact that she's a single mom now, and the fact that she has to do all of this on her own. But on top of that, like she's mourning. She's grieving the loss of her mother. And she has to do all of these things now on top of learning how to cope with the loss of her mother. All right, we're going to go ahead. We're going to get Charles to come on over here to the grave and do a little bit of mourning himself. And then once he is done with that, maybe he can talk to his dad and he can just tell his dad, like, I have got so many problems in my life right now. Like, I've just lost one of my best friends. My grandma was my best friend, and she's gone now. And I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I'm so sad by the loss of my grandma. We were very, very close. She used to help me with my homework every day. We used to have conversations about everything and nothing. And now she's gone, and I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Sure, I love my mom so much, and obviously I can talk to mom, and she likes to help me with my things too. But it was different because I used to talk to my grandma every day and we just had a really close bond and now she's not here anymore. And now what am I supposed to do? Who am I supposed to talk to? And I think that, you know, Maddie is going to be like kind of shocked that he was so close with Gemma. And I think Maddie is going to feel a little bit maybe guilty that he doesn't have that kind of relationship with his own son because Maddie's never around. And Maddie's also not going to know what kind of advice to give his son Yes, he's going to hug him. Yes, he's going to try to cheer him up. But Maddie's not really going to know what to say to Charles. And that's because Maddie's really not involved. Maddie doesn't come around. Maddie doesn't really come see him. As you can see, they don't have that much of a relationship bar. And it's because they don't really have that much of a relationship. And it's because Maddie is never around. And so he's not really going to know how to help his son. And yes, he loves him. I think unconditionally he, he loves him. He He's his son. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Like, you're not around. You don't know how to help him. You don't. He doesn't know how to... Like, he doesn't know what to tell him. He doesn't know how to comfort him. He doesn't know how to give him any solutions on what he can do to... Um, not feel the way he's feeling or anything like that because he doesn't know his own child. He knows, obviously, that Charles is his child, but he doesn't know him. He doesn't know him like Norma knows him or obviously like Gemma knew him. And I think Maddie kind of is starting to realize how much he's missed out on. And yeah, he is realizing that he has missed so much of Charles's life and he doesn't know him and he's thinking, what is it that I'm doing? Like, I I could have had a relationship with my son and I, and I don't have one and I don't even know this young lad. And I think he's feeling a little bit of guilt over that. Maybe he'll change. Maybe he will want to have a little bit of a relationship with him, but I don't really know. I think Norma's going to come in and she's going to just say to him, did you have a chance to talk with Charles? And how do you feel about that? And he's going to say, I did have a chance to talk with him, but I just realized that even though I did have a chance to talk with him, I don't really have a whole lot that I can say to him. Like, obviously, I'm, I know more about you than I do Charles, and I feel awkward around you because of what happened and the way we ended, and obviously the fact that I'm now married to your sister, but I still feel better talking to you than I do talking to our own son. I don't know how to help him. 
I think you would be better to help him than I can. And she's like, well, I think that you're a little bent out of shape over this whole married to my sister thing and how I'm going to react. I don't really care one way or the other. I am happy that you're married to her. And I just want to congratulate you on your marriage. Like, I think that you guys are great together. Obviously, you make each other happy. And I'm over it. Like, it doesn't matter to me. And she's like, I think that obviously you know, you're supposed to be with who you're supposed to be with. So they've gained a little bit of a sentiment here. Obviously, he's glad that she is, you know, a good friend of his and that she's understanding that, you know, he's in love with Evangeline and that she's willing to accept that. But he still feels horrible about how he is with Charles and he doesn't know how to fix that. And she's like, uh, you come around. That's how you fix it. You show up. You be here. I'm not saying that you have to take him all the time. I'm not saying that you have to see him every day. But occasionally you just show up and you just be a dad. Like, that's that's how you get to know him. So, I think Charles may start seeing a little bit more of Maddie, possibly. I don't know. It would be nice, I guess, to see that. He is going to complain a little bit to Maddie about the fact that he never sees him. I think Charles is just going to say, you know, I appreciate you talking to me about losing my grandma. I appreciate everything that you're trying to do, but you know, I don't ever see you. I don't really know you all that well. And I think that maybe that's another part of the problem here is that like, maybe I should start seeing a little bit more of you. And he's like, I think I agree, son. And I'm really going to try harder to be more permanent fixture in your life. And he's like, well, that would be great if you wanted to start coming around a little bit more often because honestly, you know, you are my dad. That's what mom told me anyway. I guess you're my dad, right? And he's like, well, yeah, I'm your dad. And he's like, okay, that's what I thought. That's what mom said. So if you were my dad, then maybe you should start coming around and we should maybe start hanging out and getting to know each other. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and go off to bed. So Charles is going to go ahead, head off to bed. He's feeling really sad. Obviously, he's really sad. He's just lost one of his best friends. And so it's getting kind of late. He's getting kind of tired. He's decided he's going to head off to bed. He's over the conversation with Maddie and he doesn't want any more confrontation where that's concerned. And so he's decided just to head off to bed. Everyone in our family is asleep and we are going to go ahead and I will check back with you guys. Norma has decided to go ahead and take a bath actually. So we are going to go ahead and let her get a bath. And then Maddie, I hope, is going to go ahead and leave because that is going to be awkward if he just like decides to walk in on her. I really don't want that to happen. So he is just cleaning up a little bit it looks like. And I love that he's helping clean up while she's taking a bath. Like that's actually kind of great. That being said, this has kind of gone into a little bit of a long episode. So I am going to, I think, go ahead and wrap it up here. I am hoping in our next episode, we will see more of Norma going ahead and figuring out what she's going to do with Neil and that we will hopefully see a little bit more of Maddie. Neil and her are good friends, but they do have bad compatibility. So I don't think that they're going to go ahead and continue on. I think that Obviously, she's going to tell him, like, look, you and I really need to just remain friends. I don't want to push push anything with that. You're married. I just want us to remain friends. So I think she's going to stay that route, and she's going to try to be a good um, sim and not break up a happy home or anything like that. But that being said, guys, I am going to go ahead and leave this episode here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you are notified when new episodes go live on the channel. And I will see you guys in our next Decades Legacy Challenge where we will definitely be seeing more of Norma and hopefully more of Maddie with Charles. But until then, I am going to go ahead and fly for now. Bye, Ravens.